welcome back so far we have uh, started recalling the basic notions in group theory ring theory field theory that we require in order to study galva theory so i want to do one more uh, video where i recall some important results in field theory so last video i talked about finite fields and we talked about splitting fields so the next topic i want to quickly recall i will again not prove these things in detail and uh, my goal is only to uh, important uh, recall important facts okay so the important notion that i want to uh, recall for you is uh, the notion of algebraic closure of a field okay so let me first define a field f let me use k a field k is called algebraically closed it is called algebraically closed if if every non constant polynomial small f over k has a root okay this is a very simple statement uh, every polynomial non constant uh, of course because constants cannot have non zero constant cannot have a root so every non constant polynomial has a root in k equivalently every any irreducible polynomial of positive degree i'll put that in brackets just to avoid constants again <coughs> every irreducible polynomial in kx has degree 1 clearly if uh, a, a polynomial has roots uh, it it uh, it is not irreducible so these are equal i mean one can check it is a trivial verification that these two conditions are equivalent okay so if you have a degree 2 or higher polynomial <coughs> if it has a root it cannot be irreducible okay and if you have uh, the, and the only irreducible polynomials are degree 1 means any polynomial of degree 2 or higher will have to factor because it kx is u of d and you can keep factoring until you get a linear factor which corresponds to a root okay so this is what an algebraically closed field is the standard example for is is c okay complex numbers right is algebraically closed c stands for the field of complex numbers it is algebraically closed and this is the statement of fundamental theorem of algebra that has lots of different proofs which you may have learned in some other course so this is the fundamental theorem of algebra on the other hand r or q are not algebraically closed let me shorten this by saying right this is because x square plus 1 has no root in r or q okay so these are not algebraically closed okay now let me define the algebraic closure of a field let f be a field an algebraic closure of f is a field extension k of f so k must contain the field f such that it has two properties one k is algebraically closed k must be algebraically closed and very important the extension k over f is algebraic so the first condition is not enough so again the standard example for us is c is is an algebraic closure of of r right because c is algebraically closed 
and c colon r is 2 right so it is a degree 2 extension so it is uh, algebraic i mean this is trivial c is algebraically closed and c over r is algebraic on the other hand c is not in algebraic closure of q c is algebraically closed fine but it's not algebraic over q so example is transcendental over right so it is not algebraic so the extension is not algebraic so in order to be a algebraic closure you need to have two properties it has to be an algebraically closed field and it has to be an algebraic extension of q so the question is okay it c is not the algebraic closure what is an algebraic closure does it exist and here is where i will state this as a theorem i don't want to go to the proof of this because it takes me away from what i want to do it is a nice proof it uses zons lemma but it, it doesn't reveal anything for us as far as this course is concerned so later on if i have time i'll just make a separate video just covering this theorem which says that every field has an algebraic closure simple statement and the proof uses zons lemma so you have to uh, construct a series of fields and show that you can add roots of all polynomials remember we can add roots of one polynomial namely we can construct splitting fields but to construct algebraic closure you have to do you have to add roots of all polynomials at the same time make sure that you don't introduce transcendental elements okay so this is uh, proof is not difficult uses zons lemma which you may have le heard uh, learned before it is it, for example it is used to show that every commutative ring has a maximal ideal okay so we will not do the proof for today but it is a standard fact you can find this in any textbook on algebra so every field has an algebraic closure the question then is uh, how many algebraic closures can it have is it unique and that is what i want to again state as a theorem without getting into the proof but before uh, stating that I, I want to develop i want to express a few theorems about extending field homomorphisms which are going to be useful for us later so i, I want to also recall for you what is a splitting field so let f be a field and let small f be a polynomial or the field f then we know that have small f has a splitting field over f i i mentioned this last time you can add roots one by one and eventually reach a field where you have all the roots and that field is generated by the roots of small f okay so some important facts i mean the these are uh, standard facts so note that an say k note that k over f k is a finite extension of f okay it's in fact uh, we can also talk about its degree but first point is it is a finite extension because remember k is generated by the roots right so you have extensions like this right so this is finite because it is generated by a single algebraic element this is finite and so on so the whole thing is finite in fact this tower also tells you that if n equals degree of f then k colon f is less than n factorial because this is at most n because f small f is a root of uh, is a polynomial that alpha 1 satisfies so its irreducible polynomial will have degree less than equal to small f because it divides small f 
and this is less than or equal to n minus 1 because now you can clear out x minus alpha 1 from f and you look at the degree n minus 1 polynomial that you get and so on. So, this is true and you can have uh, equality sometimes and it can also be a strict inequality sometimes. So, three examples that I mean a couple of examples that will illustrate this if you take f to be q and small f to be x cube minus 2 then k is actually q adjoint cube root of 2 and omega where omega is primitive third root of unity and this degree over q is 6 okay, which is 3 factorial. On the other hand if you take f to be q and small f to be x cube minus 1 here k is actually just q adjoint omega and the degree is 2 here and the irreducible polynomial is x square plus x plus 1. Okay. And this is of course less strictly less than 3 factorial. And one final example if you take f to be the finite field of p elements and you take small f to be x power p r minus x the splitting field small f over capital F is nothing but the finite field with p power r elements. This is something that we have we have mentioned uh, as part of our structure theorem of finite fields. The, the unique field of order p power r contain is consists of it consists of roots of this polynomial x power p power r minus x. Okay. So, now what I want to address first before getting to the uniqueness of algebraic closure is uniqueness of splitting fields. So, are splitting fields unique? Okay, so, when we ask such a question in mathematics, it means are they isomorphic. Okay, so, are they isomorphic? In fact, we want them to be isomorphic over the base field. Are th the question is are they f isomorphic? Remember, I talked about f homomorphisms of uh, fields in the previous video, which means that there is an isomorphism which fixes f point wise. Okay? And in this context, I want to introduce this very important uh, extension theorems that we will use at a few places in the rest of the course. So, I want to state one simple uh, case first which I call 1 extension theorem 1 and then I will generalize this to an arbitrary situation. So, this is the following. So, I will not write maybe the full statement or let me actually write the full statement I will also draw a picture. So, let f be a field. So, an arbitrary field let k over f be an extension. In fact, I could have just maybe written like this. Let k over f be an extension of fields. Okay. Let alpha be an element of k which is algebraic over f. So, I am really interested in now in f alpha okay. uh, not in k. So, on the other hand let L be a field okay, before that and let small f be a polynomial in capital F x be the irreducible polynomial of alpha over f. Okay. Now, let L over k be another field extension. In fact, uh, let me write it like this. Let L be a field with a field homomorphism ok. So, F is in fact isomorphic to a subfield of L, but I want to state it in this generality. Remember any field homomorphism is by definition uh, injective because the kernel of a ring homomorphism is an ideal. A field homomorphism sends 1 to 1. So, the kernel cannot be all of f and any field has only two ideals namely f and 0. So, the kernel has to be 0. So, it is an injective map. So, that means 
f is isomorphic to its image which is a subfield of l suppose sigma of f has a root in l okay when i write sigma of f uh, i mean the following so let me just write it like this so sigma is a function from f to l so sigma naturally extends to a function from fx to lx i'll use by abuse of notation same letter sigma to denote that so here x goes to x that's all and constants go to if a belongs to f it goes to sigma of a right so then basically what it does is sigma of a polynomial is simply a sigma of a n x power n sigma of a 1 x plus sigma of a 0 ok. So, that is what uh, sigma of f is and I am now assuming that sigma of f has a root in L ok. So, if that is the case then there exists a field extension sorry there exists an extension there exists a field homomorphism let me write this like this homomorphism sigma prime from f alpha to l which extends sigma so what i mean is that is sigma prime restricted to f is sigma so all this will become clear if i draw just a picture so here f here f alpha here of course f alpha sits in k but k is irrelevant for this theorem and then i have a function from f to l so and f uh, sigma of f has a root in l so i will call that beta so beta is an element here so now i am claiming that there exists a function from f alpha to l which i am calling sigma prime which makes this diagram commutative which means that if you take an element in f apply sigma you get something in l but you can also think of it as an element in f alpha and apply sigma prime you get the same value so that is how that is what we mean when we say sigma prime extends sigma so i claim that such a thing exists and the proof idea is very simple. So, we know that f alpha this is standard field theory is isomorphic to f x modulo small f x. This I claim is basically equal to sigma of f x modulo f prime x or rather uh, sigma of f. Okay. So, if you wish you can actually right. So, sigma f is a field image field and that is contained in L. So, if you wish you can call that f prime. So, what I am really doing is f prime x modulo um, modulo f prime or sigma f of x ok. So, that is of course contained in L right. So, this f prime is this is actually nothing but isomorphic to f prime beta right. So, beta is here. So, this is f prime beta which is contained in L. So, and this is the map that uh, I construct. So, f is contained in f alpha, f alpha is isomorphic to f prime, f prime beta which is contained in L. So, this composition gives me the function sigma prime and the, the way construction goes it is clear that it extends sigma ok. So, this sigma prime extends sigma namely that sigma prime restricted to f is sigma. So, this is the construction. So, if this is not clear just pause the video think about it these are very standard things. 
okay so this part is clear using this basic ingredient we have the extension theorem 2 which which is much more uh, general but essential idea is this extension theorem 1 and zons lemma so you have to generalize this more uh, in a more general situation so here you have the following so let k over f be an algebraic extension now earlier i took an algebraic extension uh, uh, generated by a single element now i'm taking an algebraic extension without any assumptions and let l be an algebraically closed field with a homomorphism with a field homomorphism of course i don't need to always say this field homomorphism sigma from f to l okay so the picture is we have f k l sigma is the field homomorphism and this is an algebraic extension earlier it's similar to the earlier picture except that I am not doing for f alpha, I am doing for entire k and now I am assuming l to be algebraically closed, not just a field where this particular polynomial has a root. So, l is algebraically closed. Okay. Then there exists a field homomorphism sigma prime from k to l which extends sigma that is as obvious as before it is simply saying that the restriction of sigma prime to f is just sigma. So, that means there is a map here which I call sigma prime which extends sigma. So, this is a commutative diagram which means that if you take an element in capital F to repeat what I said earlier take an element in capital F. So, if A is in capital F, then sigma prime of A, think of A as an element of K and apply sigma prime or apply sigma to it, you get the same answer. Okay? So, this is what we mean by extension. Okay? This is essentially a combination of such things, but remember this need not be a finite extension. If it is a finite extension K over F, one can just do finitely many steps of such things and argue that one gets the the extension sigma prime, but for non-finite algebraic extensions, one has to use uh, John's lemma. So, the proof uses extension theorem 1 and John's lemma. Yeah, so this is standard uh, proof. Again, you can do this, read this in any book. You look at sub subfields of K where you can extend to which you can extend sigma. So, of course, that is a non-empty set because f is contained in it and then you look at all such things family of all subfields of k to which you can extend sigma and then you show that there is a partial order in which you can given by the inclusion every totally ordered subset has a maximal element. So, the family itself has a maximal element and then you argue that it has to be k because if it is not you can extend it further by using the first statement because you can always extend it to an algebraic element, a single algebraic element. Okay? So, this in particular gives me two corollaries which I want to state and end the video there. Corollary one is let f be a field and uh, let f be a polynomial over it. Then any two splitting fields of small f over capital F are f isomorphic. Okay? This proof is rather easy because you can take, uh, you can in fact use just the extension theorem 1 because you have a finite extension, splitting fields are finite extensions. So, you can no need to use Zons lemma, just induction and extension theorem 1 will give you the required statement. So, all you do is you take L also to be F. Okay? So, you can uh, construct this or you can uh, figure out how to do this, it is a good exercise.
Okay, so in fact, let me write the second corollary also, and then leave both as an exercise. Okay, so any two. Okay, so again, let L be a field. Any two algebraic closures of F are F isomorphic. Okay, so these are in uh, both statements that we will uh, constantly use, and both are good exercises. So in my problem session later on, I will try to do these these. explicitly using the extension theorems so the point is because any two splitting fields are f isomorphic we often say we can often say the splitting field though we have to keep in mind that it's only up to isomorphism and the algebraic closure so this is an important uh, conclusion for us we can talk about this splitting field of a polynomial or the algebraic closure of a field okay so in particular you know that q has an algebraic closure and that will sit inside c so maybe in an exercises we discuss this but even otherwise even apart from the corollaries these extension extension theorems themselves are very important to us okay both extension theorems are very important these extension theorems are useful for us later so we we will use them later so make sure that you understand the statements i am again reminding you that i am not proving these these are uh, uh, essentially i proved the first one but second one is a standard argument using zons lemma so i will not do this but please uh, understand the statement because that will be useful for us later so let me stop here and then in the next video we'll continue with galva theory thank you